Uh, my name is Michael Twery. I'm the director of the National Center on Sleep Disorders Research at the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, and I'm here today uh, with Dr. Emmanuel Mignot of Stanford University, uh, a, one of our leading researchers uh, uh, working on narcolepsy research and causes of sleepiness and the genetics of narcolepsy and its treatment. Uh, Dr. Mignot, why don't you tell us a little bit about your research? So, when I started to work on narcolepsy, it was not recognized, mm -hmm. so people were misdiagnosed, people didn't even know what it was, so they were seeing the doctors and, you know, the doctors weren't able to say what you have. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, and at the time I remember diagnosing patients and, you know, it's not so difficult, they, they give me the symptoms, they tell them that's what you have. And then some of them would literally, you know, cry because they thought for the first time, you know, they had been told they were crazy, and for the first time, you could tell them, mm -hmm. this is your problem, and mm -hmm. they know that you know. You know, it's like suddenly you describe the symptoms the way they have them, mm -hmm. so they know that, it, you know, you have found their problem. Mm -hmm. So that's extremely important. The second thing is we discovered it has a biochemical cause, mm -hmm. not in their mind, so it's like a little chemical that's missing mm -hmm. in their brain that helps to stay asleep and fend your dream, and when this chemical is not present, you have narcolepsy. So now we have a test where we can do a biochemical test and say, yes, you know, the chemical is missing, you have narcolepsy. So, so it's really, it's kind of a fairy tale come true. You've discovered the, gene, the proteins, the genes, the, we, there's drugs that act on these pathways, right? Yes. I mean, it's all coming to fruition. So even more exciting, I think 10 years after uh, this particular discovery of the link between this chemical called hypocretin or rexin, and the lack of it and the cause of narcolepsy. Uh, we now have drugs that are under review at the F FDA mm -hmm. for uh, first actually insomnia mm -hmm. because people who have sleep problems it's more common to have insomnia yeah. so the first thing that the pharmaceutical company did is actually to block the hypocretin system mm -hmm. to make people sleep and dream better <laughs> and uh, I think now people are starting to think of doing the opposite which is what I really want is a drug that would stimulate and replace your exin hypocretin mm -hmm. so that it would replace what's missing in patients with uh, narcolepsy. Mm -hmm. And that should really be the best treatment for them. It mm -hmm. should be like insulin mm -hmm. for patients who have type 1 diabetes who don't have, you know. And it will happen. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to take 10 more years. So which, mm -hmm. to be honest, as a scientist, uh, it's long, but it's not that long. You didn't mention the discovering or advancing our understanding of how narcolepsy comes about. I mean, you mentioned that it's uh, it's not just a, a part of someone's personality, but there's actually a biological cause. And is this something that, that uh, uh, afflicts people? Or are they born with it? No, they, they develop it. Mm -hmm. So people are born completely normal. Uh -huh. They just have a genetic predisposition that many other people have. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, I would say 20% of the population has that genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. And then what we are learning now is when you get certain infection, mm -hmm. uh, it triggers the immune system start to fight the infection but makes a mistake and attacks the brain cells that produce hypocretin, confusing them with some kind of bugs that you have been mm -hmm. exposed to. That's called an autoimmune disease. And then the cells that produce this chemical called hypocretin mm -hmm. are killed by mistake by your immune system, and then you have narcolepsy. So this research <coughs> doesn't only have implication for sleep in general. Mm -hmm. It has implication for infection, vaccination, as well as immunology mm -hmm. and autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I think by maybe vaccinations or immunological prevention, we might be able to stop even narcolepsy from starting in the people who are susceptible. And, you know, I don't think you can tell that before you start research. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to be very flexible and, uh, and right now the technology is so amazing that we can make a lot of progress. Yeah. And um, I, I do believe an age is really indispensable and the flexibility is very important, being able to go in different fields mm -hmm. and be reviewed by the best experts. Excellent. It's a good system. Thank you very much, Dr. McNow. I really enjoyed it. Good. You're taking some time. It's a great story of discovery. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Bye.